Hello guys, and let's talk about some really good updates from brave Ukrainian partisans working in the very toxic environment of Russian Federation. During the last month, three serious explosions destroyed part of Russian railway. And this is good. Let me tell you more about the last smoking accident that took place in Nizhny Tahil, very far away from Ukraine, and remind you about the others, which were quite recent. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda and fake news. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. So you know, in my videos, I provide you an ordinary Ukrainian perspective and also summaries that we in Ukraine consider quite important, but sometimes they remained unnoticed by global media. And that is the fact that within the last month, starting from the 11th of November, I guess, more than three serious, actually four serious smoking accidents, as Russians describe any explosion on the territory of their military objects, so such explosion accidents took place on Russian railroads. I have to remind you that Russia is really big in terms of its misery and also in terms of its territories, and they extremely actively use railroad for the supply of their troops in Ukraine. And many military items, weapons travel through the territories of Russia. And when we are able to break this logistic chains, we are super excited. Also, as we are not allowed, I think it's unjust to use long range missiles targeting military objects inside Russia, we have to be creative. And this creativity is also extremely brave because there are small, totally unprotected partisan group inside Russia that perform such, as Russians say, sabotage tasks. All of these accidents on Russian railways were proved by uh, Russian Ministry of Defense. They officially commented about them on media. But of course, they typically simply describe the sound that it was loud. And perhaps in a couple of days, they will say it was just because someone smoked carelessly. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new and demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine and all the democratic world. Because believe me, this is a war for democratic values and against totalitarian, authoritarian evil, which is true evil. So Nizhny Tahil is really far away from Ukraine, even far away from Moscow, deep inside Russian Federation. And an explosion occurred close to an oil depot and um, destroying a part of the railroad and what else we don't know because you cannot find much information from the Russian side. Also another one of my favorite uh, accidents as they say that took place on the railroad was very far away in Severomuyski tunnel and it seems to me uh, you remember the video we had about that. Severomurski tunnel is on the border of Russia and China. It actually connects these two countries and now even though uh, China tries to hide it, not to demonstrate it. We know it supplies Russia with weapons and all the stuff they need for uh, the invasion. And that's why any connection uh, railway is extremely important between these two countries. And during the night from the 29th to the 30th of November, um, this tunnel was destroyed first with a huge explosion. And then some trains were uh, directed into another smaller tunnel that is less uh, used and explosion happened there too. So Russia was cut down from this railway connection with China, which definitely led to lots of delays and problems for their army. <clears throat> And uh, on the 11th of November, perhaps this was just the start of many other successful operations, as you see, an explosion was in Ryazan region and um, also leading to the derailment of uh, 19 uh, cargo cars of the train and severe destruction of the railway. 
But uh, this is not just the destruction that is important, it is also the demonstration that Russian railroads are not safe, they are vulnerable, and even small partisan Ukrainian units are able to cause serious troubles to their logistics chain. Also, this demonstrates Ukrainian creativity, you know, like uh, this is the moment where we have to invent other ways to um, slow down Russian supply and um, because we're not allowed to use many things that we could uh, but I don't know what's wrong with this understanding of war people are afraid of escalation but the only person who actually escalates is uh, Putin and uh, victims cannot escalate anything but we cannot win this war only on the territory of Ukraine, unfortunately. I don't see this victory as just Ukrainians stopping all the missiles that Russia targets on Ukraine, waiting for, waiting for what? That Russia will run out of missiles? We see it's not happening, that um, they will become poor because of sanctions. They don't care, they've been poor for hundreds of years, this is their normal state that uh, China and uh, North Korea and other dictatorships will stop supporting them. Not likely. So unfortunately, it is force that is needed. And this force can take shape of long-range missiles, F-16s and other beautiful stuff that we are constantly asking for. And a kind reminder, this is not uh, just like asking for something, I consider it truly an investment in a future and democratic world. Because as many wise people say, who told you that democracy is always winning? Sometimes we have to fight for it. Because many authoritarian regimes, they are extremely coordinated, they support each other without any delays, and they impose serious threats on our future normal living with respect to human life, diversity, choice, and all the other things that seemed by many um, taken for granted. Thank you so much for your support and understanding. If you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and share the videos that you like. Because Russia constantly fights against us in the informational battlefield too. And thank you so much for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. Today is super frosty in Ukraine, like minus 12, minus 15 Celsius in the city. I can only imagine how cold it is uh, on the front lines. And this is what takes away all the excitement from this windy and frosty weather. Also, uh, remember to subscribe to my Instagram, Threads, Twitter. I'm active there and I'm also on a Discord community. We have a nice merch shop with lots of t-shirts, sweatshirts, cups and stickers that work well as reminders and conversation starters about Ukraine. But most importantly, thank you for your continued support and attention to Ukraine. United we stand and united we win. Slava Ukraina!